so hello, uh, I'm Abigail Keller and I would like to present to you today a uh, part of my uh, PhD research about the uh, about self-assembly of uh, optoelectronically active uh, hexagonal uh, metal oxide inside the porous aluminum membrane. Uh, porous uh, metal oxides have a wide variety of applications, primarily in catalysis, separating, separation technology, and in control drug release. Additional functionality can then be uh, achieved by incorporation of uh, guest molecules, uh, active guest molecules, that will be located inside the porous substrate. Uh, in my group, the hybrid material and device group, uh, we use uh, uh, the mesoporous, mesostructured metal oxide in combination with, uh, uh, electro, uh, with optically active uh, materials, uh, organic materials. This allows us to construct uh, devices such as uh, light emitting diodes, electrochromic devices, and organic photovoltaics. Uh, on these two topics, you can see tomorrow uh, a poster session. Um, to obtain uh, mesoporous uh, metal oxides, we use a well-known synthesis, uh, a combination of two well uh, synthesis. The first one is a self-assembly uh, of surfactants or block of polymers. Uh, surfactants are amphiphilic molecules uh, that have a hydrophilic segment and a hydrophobic segment. Uh, when introduced into a polar solvent, uh, they form micelles and at higher surfactant concentration, a wide variety of periodic structures can be formed. Um, the periodic length uh, of this system can vary between 1 to 100 nanometers uh, depending on the surfactant type and synthesis condition. The second process is an inorganic polymerization of, an, of a metal precursor, here TEOS, that undergoes a hydrolysis and condensation to form an amorphous uh, silicon network. When the inorganic polymerization is done in the um, uh, presence of the self-assembled surfactants, we, will we can obtain uh, an ordered uh, mesostructure uh, solid uh, phase. Uh, here we can see a schematic view of a uh, hexagonally packed cylinder uh, phase, and uh, a TEM image of the same phase uh, can be shown up here. You can see that the long axis uh, of the cylinder is running through the picture here, uh, and this, since this is a top view image, uh, we understand that uh, the cylinders are just horizontal to the substrate underneath. Nevertheless, a vertical orientation of uh, such cylinders can be uh, used for a wide variety of applications, among which uh, photovoltaic cells. Uh, as the, uh, the metal structure is forming parallel to the substrate, uh, we choose to use a uh, confine the environment uh, to orient uh, the growth uh, vertically. A previous computer simulation as well as uh, experimental studies have been done on this subject, and you can see that uh, the confinement gives rise to a wide variety of uh, um, phases, oxygenal phases, among which also the vertical uh, phase that we would like to induce. This brings me to my research objective, which is to direct the vertical alignment of the metal oxide surfactant hexagonal phase by co-assembly inside the porous substrate. Uh, with the later view of uh, wanting to construct a photovoltaic cell by incorporating a, a conjugated polymer uh, inside the metal oxide surfactant uh, mesostructure. The experimental system we chose for this purpose is uh, a uh, substrate of a commercially available adnodic aluminum membrane um, with the thickness of 60 uh, micron. Uh, the silica precursor is TEOS, as I mentioned before. A uh, surfactant I will show result of today is P123. And the solvent uh, used in my group is primarily THF, which allows us also to dissolve the conjugated polymer uh, into the soil solution. Uh, the experiments are done in controlled uh, humidity condition uh, in which I soak the aluminum membrane uh, with the precursor solution. Uh, the evaporation of the solution promotes the uh, self-assembly of the surfact uh, and silica inside the pores. Um, the conditions uh, I will uh, look at are uh, the relative humidity 
and the concentration of the surfactant. I will check the effects of these conditions upon the uh, filling of the pores, uh, in pore filling, and the uh, uh, appearance of the vertical uh, alignment of the in pore mesostructure. Let's start with the influence of relative humidity. Uh, these are two TEM images, a uh, bright field. Uh, here you can, we can see uh, the alumina in black. Uh, inside the pores, we can detect uh, the mesostructures. Uh, you can see here they are very distorted, uh, but uh, the good news is that they are filling most of the pores quite nicely. Uh, moving to a higher humidity, you can see this has a good effect on the mesostructure. They are not distorted anymore. They are well ordered. And what you see here, uh, this is a top view of uh, such structures, either a spiral-like or stuck donut-like, when we look from above. So the white domains are then the surfactant domains, and the darker domains will be the silica inside the pores. Uh, we can also see uh, under these conditions the uh, rise of a few uh, vertical aligned uh, cylinders uh, in the center of a few pores. Uh, small angle X-ray scattering of the sample show that uh, there is indeed a long-term order uh, in the system, uh, but due to a shrinkage of the mesostructure in the pores, it's difficult to determine the type of uh, mesostructure obtained. Uh, so, so far we could see that the high humidity increases the order of the system, of the mesostructure. Let's now check the influence of the surfactant concentration. Uh, so far the results I've shown you was uh, of a low uh, surfactant uh, concentration. Uh, increasing the surfactant concentration, we see a um, good feeling of the pores. Uh, almost all of them uh, indeed have a mesostructure inside. Uh, the in-pore filling has also improved, and the, the mesostructure did not shrink. And we can see a larger, more abundant uh, vertical um, orientation of the, ceiling, of the hexagonal uh, phase uh, inside uh, the pores. Uh, the sax uh, pattern obtained from this image uh, show a uh, hexagonal arrangement uh, of the mesostructures in the pores. Um, Uh, when we take the same uh, sample uh, and want to look at it from the side instead of from the top view, uh, we obtain this image. Um, here in black you see again the alumina, and within the channels of the alumina you see the hexagonal mesostructure. So the white, the white dots uh, are there the surfactant domains, we can see, sorry, we can see here and uh, they are surrounded by uh, the silica within the pores. Uh, during our experiments, I noticed there is a strong influence of the pore shape upon the obtained mesostructures. I could see that uh, in round or semi-round pores, uh, the, sphere, the mesostructure is formed a spiral-like or stuck donut-like uh, circles inside the pores. Uh, these are, of course, oriented horizontally to the substrate. But in triangular-like pores, uh, I see very often uh, the vertical alignment uh, that I would like to achieve. Uh, our hypothesis for this uh, observation is that uh, it is not energetic, energetically favorable for the uh, cylinders to undergo uh, a, a curvature uh, stiffer than a certain angle. Under these conditions, they will uh, uh, choose, uh, for energetical, energetical reasons, to just align with the long axis of the pore. Do I have still some time? Uh, in this point, then, I would like to get back to the conjugated polymer. As we said, so far I showed the arrangement of the surfactant surrounded by uh, silica. And I would like to conjugate, uh, uh, conju I would like to incorporate the conjugated polymer uh, to the structure upon uh, its formation. Uh, this was done in my group already uh, uh, quite uh, many times uh, on uh, flat uh, surfaces uh, in the form of uh, thin layers, and uh, we could also fabricate uh, devices. 
Uh, I chose to um, incorporate uh, the conjugated polymer uh, F8PT uh, that uh, has their schematic drawing shown here. Um, I would like to draw your attention to the sulfur on the backbone of this uh, polymer. Uh, since now I'm going to show you a comparison between a bright field TEM image of a sample of the composited uh, silica, surfactant, and conjugated polymer, F8BT, uh, against a sulfur distribution map uh, of the same uh, mesostructure from the same sample. Uh, here is uh, an image of, of uh, energy filter TEM, and in white we see uh, electrons that interacted with sulfur. Um, since the sulfur is only found on the polymer and not uh, on the silica or surfactant, uh, we can see that uh, indeed the uh, conjugated polymer is uh, inside the mesostructure. And uh, when you look closely, you can see that uh, it mimics and is located inside the brighter regions here that are corresponding to where the surfactant is. Um, this leads us to the conclusion that the uh, F8BT is incorporated and is well distributed is inside the surfactant domains of the mesostructure. To conclude, uh, mesostructures can indeed be formed in the pores of an alumina substrate using the THF based synthesis. The conjugated polymer can be incorporated and well distributed inside the mesostructure. A slower evaporation of the solvent achieved by high humidity conditions lead to well-ordered mesostructures. Uh, at higher surfactant concentration, more vertically aligned structures are formed, and the orientation of the pore structure is greatly influenced by the pore shape. Another conclusion I have no time today to show is that templating of the mesostructure starts from the pore walls and move inwards towards the center of the pores. I would like to thank my supervisor, Professor Gittifai, and uh, also Dr. Jaron Kaufman uh, for the FTEM and Dr. Tsipi Koenheims uh, for the FIB sample preparation. These are both from the Technion uh, Microscopy Center in the Faculty of Material Engineer. And thank you for your attention. Abigail, how much, how many, uh, how much uh, water do you have in, inside this structure? Do you know how much uptake of uh, solvent uh, you have there. How much water I have in yeah. the system? Actually, now I'm trying to determine this uh, more exactly. Um, if I have to estimate uh, by molar ratio to the TEOS, uh, to the silica precursor, I would say it's about a uh, one to five molar ratio of, uh, mole of water molecules to TEOS molecules. Can you get rid of the water and uh, still preserve the, main, the structure? Can I get rid of? Sorry? Can, can I get? Can you get rid of the water? Can you evaporate the water somehow and, and uh, still preserve, maintain the structure? I need the water to be able to self-assemble to uh, the surfactants because uh, this is the driving force of the self-assembly. The, the difference between the hydrophilic parts and the hydrophobic parts of the surfactant. So this must be maintained. Uh, if if you extract the water, the whole structure will collapse. Yes. Okay. Uh, it will not be formed. It will not call it just won't form. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other question or comments? If not, let's proceed. Thank you very much.